You're listening to a programme from BBC Radio 4. I've locked myself away to talk to people on the internet. You have configured Skype correctly. I started with nothing, just a Facebook page which said, talk to me. Hello, is this Igor? Yes, I am. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Alan. Hello, Clotilda. Hello. Is this Carlos? Yes, Alan, how are you? I've been working through the night. It's 11 minutes past 1 a.m. here in the UK. 2.37 a.m. Travelling the world through the internet. Argentina. I'm in Accra, Ghana. I'm in New Delhi, India. Random encounters. I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to be around anybody. You were shot in the leg by a sniper. You've just been praying for somebody. Yeah. So far, all the conversations have been online. Good to hear your voice. But this week, that all changes. Hello? Hello! Hello, is this Brian? Yes, this is Brian. Hi, how are you? I first spoke with Brian 18 months ago. I dedicate my lunch hour normally to uh, chat with my uh, girlfriend, Anna, that I met online. I was just browsing profiles in Russia. (laughs) <laughs> and I stumbled across the most beautiful woman in the world. <laughs> but this was more than just a typical online romance. Do you speak Russian? No, I'm learning to speak Russian. And does Anna speak English? No, not yet. She's trying to learn English too. <laughs> so I began to chat with her using a Google Translator. That's how the relationship continued. Brian and Anna relying on online translation to communicate. I say that you were both lost in translation, but in fact you're, you found each other through translation. <laughs> this was the first of numerous conversations with Brian. Hello? Hello, Brian. The next time, he'd been to visit Anna in Russia. Was, uh, something, let me tell you. It took me over 24 hours just to get there. Did you feel that it all was exactly how you thought it would be in your mind? Oh, yes. The physical, spiritual, mental connection, everything was there. Six months later... Hello? Hello, Alan. Brian had some big news for me. We just decided we were going to get married and... Anna and her two children will be leaving Russia and moving to America. And the amazing thing is, this whole relationship is still relying on online translation. Neither Brian nor Anna speak each other's languages. She's left the only home she's ever known all her life, basically. Anna and her children were on their way. She's coming to a country where she's never been. She's never even been on an airplane before. I spoke with Brian at the airport on the night of their arrival. She should be here any minute, but it had to have landed. They were all going to come over on a three-month visa. There's some people coming up the escalator here. Anna has to get married to Brian within those three months. Otherwise, Anna and the children have to return to Russia. And I still don't see... You guys coming from New York? No. <gasps> Here she is! There she is! I missed her! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I missed you too! Oh! <laughs> She's here! <laughs> Ryan, this is a very special moment. Yes. Okay, well, she just told me to get off the phone. <laughs> so, Alan? Well, Brian, may I wish you good luck, and I look forward to catching up with you shortly. Okay. Uh, you can call me in the next few days, probably. And it was then that I had an idea. I was thinking it would be a wonderful experience to visit you and Anna in Boise, Idaho. Oh, wow. To see you in person and to kind of capture your life with Anna now. That would be, that would be, uh, that would be interesting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know, that might fit in to your wedding plans. Yes, I, I, th- I think it would definitely uh, take it up to the next level. Brian set the wedding date for the 21st of September. And I booked the plane tickets so I could be there. But then okay. um, I received a rather worrying message. Um, so this is really big news. Um, the wedding that was planned for Saturday the 21st of September 
is now off. Hello. Brian, I got your message. Um, it's big news. It's uh, a little bit difficult, but uh, yeah. well, unfortunately we haven't made a lot of arrangements. Tell me how you both made the decision to postpone the wedding. I think the 21st was just a little bit too soon for her. <laughs> She's been through a lot. She came halfway around the world. She's only been here just about a month and a half now. Just a little shy of a month and a half. And, and I think maybe perhaps uh, things may not be as nice as she'd imagine. You know, what is the cutoff point, Brian? October twentieth, I think, would probably be the ninety-day cutoff. The clock is ticking, isn't it, Brian? Yes, and I, I, I hope that she doesn't have second thoughts. But wedding or no wedding, the plane tickets have been bought. Boarding the plane, I had no idea quite how this story would unfold. Fifteen hours later. And here I am, breathing Idaho air. Found the hire car, and on the number plate, it says Scenic Idaho, and underneath, the legend, Famous Potatoes. Turn right, then turn left. Malls, restaurants, banks, gas stations. I'm just minutes from Brian now. It's a beautiful, clear evening beyond the mountains. The American flags outside the houses. There's Brian. There is Brian. <laughs> okay. Oh, hello! hello. <laughs> I'm getting out of the car. Hey, how are you doing? How are you? So good to see you. In I can't be, for real. Yes. And who is this? Sean. Sure. Sean. Sure. Sure. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, over there. Oh, fantastic. Strasbourg. Strasbourg. Hello, Strasbourg. Lovely to meet you. Well, Whoa. can I welcome you inside? Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get the key out of the car. Okay, I'm struggling yes, with that. Jacob. Hello. As we get inside. Brian's sister calls. Hey, not much. Just, uh, just at home here talking to Alan Dean from London, actually. He's here in my house. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I called you earlier to let you know that I don't know if you'd got any information, but we'd changed plans for the wedding. Yes. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to double check. <laughs> so, <laughs> bye, Beck. Where does Becky live? She lives uh, probably about two miles oh, right. just down, uh, yeah. down the way. You're a big family. Is it yes. nine? Nine. How many in Anna's family? Anna's got a sister and uh, her mother and cousin, Larissa. Yeah, cousin. Uh, I mean, well, time to break out the Google Translator. This thing comes in handy, right? <laughs> Larissa is your cousin? Ah. Ah, sometimes it doesn't spell it right. I soon find out that a simple question can take a long time to answer. Ah, okay. So Larissa is uh, her, Ivan's godmother. Yes, yes. So that's the only family she has out there in Russia. You are heavily reliant on that internet connection. Oh, yes. Uh, if, if we lose that internet connection, we've lost all forms of communication. Anna, when I first spoke with Brian, you were in Russia. Yeah, she's you know? having a tough time. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> English language, very difficult. <laughs> I like uh, Russian language. Well, it's a lovely language to listen to. Huh? Yeah, it's a lovely language. It's a well, look, I don't want to keep you guys. I really wanted to just come and say hello. Tomorrow we'll meet. Yep. Right? <laughs> All See right. you tomorrow, guys. All right, let me walk you out to the car. Thank you. The long flight was catching up with me, and that first encounter 
was a little bit uneasy. The next morning, Good morning is in Russian. I turn up with an interpreter. Katya. Good morning. Good morning. The plan is to go to an auction because Brian wants to get some bargain furniture for the home. So what are you looking for? Uh, just whatever yeah. meets the eye. Actually, I've been looking for decor ever since my first wife took everything out of the house. <laughs> so when she left, uh, she took everything and left it bare, pretty much. So she left me with the children. Hello. Ah. <laughs> Hi, Anna. How are you? It soon becomes clear to me that it's not been easy for Anna in these first few months in the U.S. Right now, she really hasn't been anywhere by herself. She's always had me with her. So when you're at work? When I'm at work, she pretty much stays at home. Can you understand that? I can, I can understand. She has been through a big change. And I don't want to add any stress <laughs> to her life. Six nine three zero. Yeah. Oh. What number is the auction? It's six nine four nine. So just probably, there. I think yeah. it's just over there. Yeah. All right. One eighty nine. One eighty nine. Hey, you got a truck there. On the truck there, bit 25, bit 25 to go now, 25, a cute truck, and 10 to go now, 15, four, now 10, another 15, where? A 10, another 15, 12 and a half on the truck there, 12 and a half, a 10 here now, 12 and a half, another 15, where? 15, 15, where? In front of us is a house and all its contents being sold off in a series of lots. Sold $25, their buyer number is 975. Items big and small all come under the hammer. From trunks to wardrobes to heaters to paintings on the wall. And what do you think of this estate sale? This is very interesting, very fascinating. I love not only buy things, you can also sell them if you need to. As opposed to in Russia, she had to give away lots of things just to friends and family. Of course, it was very, very hard. Say goodbye to basically all of your life. Every single thing brings in memory. It was very hard. I felt like everything was just too fast, way too fast. It was just confusing, and it still is right now at this moment. I'm sitting here, and I'm still, I'm not understanding what's happening, what's going on. Even though it's been a long time, almost two years, and we've been waiting together for this moment to come, all of a sudden I get approved so fast and the tickets were scheduled so close. I was hoping, expecting to have a, quite a bit of time at least a month to say goodbye to my family, gather all my friends. And I felt like I didn't have any time to do anything at all. Brian's got his bargain. I just purchased this complete sofa and love seat set for $15. That huge brown sofa? Yes. And the other one as well? Yes. And was that Anna's choice? Uh, no, Anna didn't know. Right before we're about to leave to Moscow for the departure, we were sitting in this empty apartment, and my daughter goes, Masha goes, Mom, are you sure these are the real tickets? Maybe we don't even have any tickets. It was just horrifying because, I mean, I quit my life. I quit my job. I sold everything. I gave away all of my stuff. I packed up my bags and I wasn't even sure if that was true, it's going to happen. And finally, as we got to the airport, the first thing I've done, I went to check if the tickets were real. 
And the women behind said me, oh, everything's okay, your tickets are real. New York, we almost missed one of our planes. We literally got into the plane four minutes before it was departing for the reason that I didn't speak any English whatsoever. It's very overwhelming not to be able to understand what's going on on in this language pressure every second of your day is just so stressful and so overwhelming i just want to go into my bedroom close the door and watch a movie in russian and be able to understand something throughout the day if it was me i think i would have difficulty coping with the new culture the new life she's been cast into this unknown new world the climax of the auction is the house itself. But Brian's not bidding on that. Before I met Anna, my life was completely falling apart. What's this gone? It's gone forever. So, 153,300. Congratulations! Two winners! I'm very happy. In fact, I almost lost my house. My house started in a foreclosure because when my, my wife left, she quit her job and uh, the mortgage that I had was way more than I could afford on my own income. So I had to stop paying the mortgage because I had to feed my children. Anna tells me that she's had two long-term relationships. The first ended when she moved to a new city, and a second partner, the father of a second child, died of pneumonia. Not long before she met Brian online. My husband was dead. It was hard financially for me. I was going through a lot of struggle and lots of depression and very harsh time. And so I was looking for something to hold on to, something very light and easy. And I felt like Brian was that person who actually was very easy to communicate to. And we were even able to communicate little jokes with each other and kind of joke by joke, day to day. He was kind of holding me up in this very hard times that I was going through. I felt like I had a need to run to the computer and answer the messages. I already had it in my head that I need to put my kids to bed and then run and answer. I had this attraction to this conversation and relationship going on. We became best friends. We'd tell each other everything. Uh, we held nothing back. Both our mindsets realized, you know what, we can't live apart. Anna and her two children huddle round the laptop so they can speak with Anna's mother in Russia on Skype. Were Maria and Ivan involved in this discussion? about them leaving their country to start this new life. From the very first moment, it wasn't my choice, it was our choice, and so we had several gatherings together, just me and them. And especially after the visit, uh, then Brian came to see us, I, we, I just gathered them together and I said, so how do you like our future family member, what do you think about him? And surprisingly, they really liked him and they said, oh, he's very kind, mom. What have you got in that bag, Brian? This is uh, our wedding ring. Brian and Anna are getting married. They've decided to go ahead with the wedding. But it's not quite the big day that Brian had originally planned. It's going to be a very low-key affair in the courthouse, the American equivalent of the registry office. You guys are going to get in the car and I'll follow you. Okay, sounds good. 
So it's just a quick walk over to the courthouse here. I think I let my thoughts of what our perfect wedding should be uh, run away. It's all very casual. Both Anna and Brian are wearing jeans. Into the courthouse. Through the revolving door. You know, I, I had the stereotypical... You know, uh, we got to have the family there. A wedding cake, you know, huge reception at the end, everybody drinking champagne, you know, and uh, that would have been good, but, you know, where's Anna's family? Where's Anna's friends? Yes, Elaine, this is Brian Lass. I have an appointment to meet with Judge Reardon. Uh, I could see that that was creating unnecessary stress for Anna. And it wasn't what she wanted, and we decided, you know what, just do it before the judge like we originally planned, because that was the original plan anyway. So we're walking through the corridor. Okay, this is room 407. This is the room we've got to bring in, right? Yes. Okay. It's an empty courtroom. The only people present at the wedding are Brian and Anna, Anna's eight-year-old son, Ivan, myself, my producer, and the interpreter, all in front of Judge Reardon. Are you all ready? Yes. We have the honor today of witnessing the marriage of Brian and Anna. This is not a matter to be entered lightly or selfishly, so I'm going to ask you, have you come here freely and without reservation to join together as husband and wife? Our interpreter, Katya, translates the proceedings so Anna can understand. I, Brian, take you, Anna, to be my wife. I, Brian, (laughs) take you, Anna, to be my wife. (laughs) I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. <laughs> in good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I, I will love you and honor Brian. you. I will love you. Uh, I, Anna, I take you, Brian. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise. I promise. To be true to, to you. To be true to you. In good times. In good times. And in bad. In sickness. In sickness. And in health. You have declared your intentions before me and these witnesses. So by the power vested in me as a magistrate judge for the state of Idaho, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss. (laughs) (laughs) And then Brian had a surprise for us. Alan Dean. Both myself and my producer Lawrence were called upon to be official witnesses at the wedding. And here? Yep. I can't quite believe that from a random Skype conversation almost two years ago, sign left. That I'm now in Boise, Idaho, signing Brian and Anna's wedding certificate. There's my signature. Yeah. You're all set. You have witnessed. I have witnessed the wedding of Brian and Anna. Uh, there's a copy of your back. A wedding that would never have taken place without the advent of online translation. When you walked in, you were Anna Generalova, and you're walking out the courthouse as Anna Lass. Da, da. Yes, I the ceremony itself was all over in a matter of minutes. And not for Brian and Anna, a big wedding reception in a hotel or a marquee on the lawn. I guess uh, I'll have a bacon cheeseburger. In fact, we adjourned to a diner. Yeah, cheeseburger for him. Uh, French fries. And a Coke. Uh, I didn't think it was important That was exactly the way I wanted it. Very small, very short, because the wedding ceremony was the main thing on my mind. The main thing on my mind was all this responsibility that was coming to my plate. Uh, four children, our responsibility in front of each other, in front of the children, and then there's no room for me when think of flowers and big wedding ceremony. I was mainly concentrating on if it's going to work, how we're going to make it work, because it's day-to-day hard work. Monday morning after the wedding weekend, Brian's at work, Anna's at home. 
and her two children are already studying in American schools. Juan, Julian, Osama, Maria. If you close your eyes and think where all six of you will be in five years' time, what are you dreaming of? I'm dreaming of uh, Aunt and I witnessing uh, Maria graduating school and starting her own life, you know. Definitely together. I can't imagine anything other than that. Definitely us together as a family. I'm seeing the very bright future and future full of opportunities for my children. And I feel like I did a very good choice. I feel very good about it, feel very comfortable about it. Because before in Russia, because it's so harsh and hard sometimes, their childhood was kind of almost over. And here I, I feel like I can make their childhood even longer a little bit and make them happier in some way. Good morning, Explorers. Today is Monday, September 23rd. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Explorers, and have a great day. But of course, Anna and her two children are not Americans yet. That will take years of uncertainty, bureaucracy and expense. It's precarious, and uh, it worries me quite a bit because she only has 30 more days, so we have to file all this mountain of paperwork within 30 days, and we have to pay the fees, which... Hundreds of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Have you got the money? I don't have the money, personally, but I'm an optimist. (laughs) It will work out. It's not a matter of uh, will it work out. It will work out. And for the time being, Brian and Anna are still using online translation to communicate.